Hello again, and thank you for your interest in joining our session. My name is Thanasis, and I'm, as I said before, I'm a software engineer at the Rosslyn Institute. And um, we just today want to present you um, a, a tool that we have been developing uh, over the last few months um, that has a graphical user interface, and it's called the Britain Scheme Designer. And as its name suggests, uh, it's um, we developed this tool with the purpose to help breeders in their workflow to design breeding schemes, mainly focusing on selection. And uh, the purpose for this meeting is to show our progress in developing the tool and receive your comments about ways in which we could improve it. And we will send you a link so that you can have access to the tool later on. And then you can um, have, a, have a chance to test it and play with it yourselves and then maybe you could uh, provide us with some more formal feedback. Probably we'll ask you to, to fill in a short um, feedback form um, after using the tool. Um, so uh, this is the overview, overview of what we will cover today. Uh, first, I will describe the scope of the tool and summarize its main features. Then I will show some examples of how the tool can be used to perform uh, different tasks. And finally, we'll have some time for questions, comments, and for some discussion about the tool. So the scope uh, for developing the tool is to simulate uh, the full cycle of a breeding program uh, to help estimate parameters such as the heritability and the expected genetic gain, to help understand how breeders' equation terms interact and to enable comparisons between different strategies and parameters such as time and cost. So in general, we hope that uh, this tool will help breeders in their decision-making process when they design a breeding scheme. And as some of you may already know, there is an Excel spreadsheet that uh, Eduardo mentioned earlier on that aims to help calculate genetic gains to optimize resource allocation in a breeding program, uh, which was developed by Gary Atlin. And the scope of our tool is similar, but um, it has a graphical user interface, so it's easier to set input parameters and show the results, visualize um, the results interactively. And it can be extended uh, using methods found in R packages because it's based on Shiny R for its development. And so in summary, uh, features of this tool include the simulation of scenarios uh, with multiple stages the calculation of parameters such as genetic gain, heritability, and total cost. And also it enables comparisons between different breeding strategies and allows the exploration of results for uh, ranges of input parameters. Uh, so now I will uh, show you a brief demo, present the main features of the tool and demonstrate how it can be used to perform the different tasks. And at the end, uh, we'll have some time for questions and comments and some discussion, okay? So I'm jumping to the tool here. So uh, when you first run the tool, which is uh, actually, it's a web-based tool, so you can, it can be accessed online. And um, you will see on the left, there's a sidebar with uh, several input settings. Uh, the user has to, to fill in. And on the right, there is um, an area which is at the moment empty in which uh, the results are displayed. And uh, the first thing uh, that you have to, to, to fill in when you want to create a new uh, breeding scenario is to set the genetic variance. And um, this is the variance between entries in the first stage of yield trials. Um, the second uh, entry is the genotype by location nested in year interaction variance. Uh, you can find more details about those fields when you hover over them as tooltips, as I do it now. And uh, the third uh, variance is the genotype by year interaction variance. And you can set this either by clicking uh, this, those small arrows over there or by just uh, clicking over here, entering and typing on those text fields. Um, then the second um, field you have to fill in is the multiplication time in years. And this is the, the Z number of uh, early generation years. And this is the phase of breeding uh, that uh, there's no selection taking place. It's usually um, the time required until you get to the population that you will use uh, in the first stage of um, your program. 
and after that you have we have the main uh, input table where um, you have the different stages of the breeding program the yield trials uh, by default there are three stages uh, here uh, each stage has uh, the number of entries so it's the the number of individuals originally uh, the number of years of locations and replicates and the plot error and at the end it's uh, the, the head ability displayed in the last column and users can uh, click on these fields and, and change them uh, on demand to set it to their own parameters they can uh, add more stages uh, if they want or they can delete stages um, dynamically uh, using those two buttons down here and also as you have noticed uh, as you click and you change parameters the head ability gets updated and this is the same when you change here variance as well so you see this uh, getting updated uh, in real time and finally you have to set um, the the selected parents which is the final number of uh, selected entries uh, and this number must be smaller or equal to the number of uh, the entries in the last year so in the, la in the last stage. So here it can be more than 10. If you make this 11 and try to run the simulation, you will get an error message. Um, so we'll leave it for now to its default value. And then there are some ranges you can set, but I would like you to ignore this for now. And I will get back to this a bit later. Um, and at the bottom you have uh, the costs. Uh, you can um, set the cost of a single plot in the program, currently set in $10 uh, by default, and the cost of a single location in the program um, set in $1,000. Again, you can change those entries uh, on demand. And at the bottom you have a small uh, summary uh, table of cost. You get the, the total years of the program, the total locations, total plots, the total uh, locations cost and the total uh, plots cost and the total cost. And of course, this is updated as you change the, the input um, uh, parameters in the form. And that's it pretty much the most simple way you can set up uh, your uh, pipeline. You press the run, the run button and you have to wait a few seconds to, to get some results appearing. So you will notice that uh, there's a new tab uh, created uh, for these uh, settings. And what the algorithm does is that it, it runs a, a deterministic simulation which calculates the mean genetic uh, value and then it samples uh, from that distribution to create those box plots for each stage. So here in this uh, instance, we had three stages and we get uh, one box plot for each of these with a mean uh, genetic value. Um, which corresponds to the genetic gain because uh, we have uh, variance equal to one. And, and then after that, you have a, a copy of the table that uh, you, have, you have used as input, which has uh, two more columns. The one shows the genetic gain and the second shows the gain per year. And this um, in includes also the years of multiplication time. So this is the, the gain you do per year uh, in that state. Um, the users can also add this uh, if, they, if they wish. So if they think that they, they want to update it and um, <clears throat> press the button update, and then you will get the new plots and the new uh, values for genetic gain and gain per year. Again, at the bottom, you have the little summary of the total cost for this uh, pipeline um, that you can use later for comparisons. And now let's assume that you want to create a second um, uh, example. You want to have a second um, scenario, which may have, uh, uh, let's say, only two stages. There's selection, the sec second stage to 10 individuals. Uh, and let's say that here are two years, you have one year and let's press run. Um, just wait a little bit for the results and then uh, you get a new tab created for this second scenario. Uh, here, because we had two stages, there are only two uh, box plots. Uh, again, similarly, 
there is a copy of the input table with uh, the parameters and then the calculate the net gain and gain per year and the summary of costs. And um, a third, let's say, one well, that has an extra, again, it has three stages. Okay. And we get, uh, again, the result for, uh, for that scenario. And then, of course, we can switch between these scenarios, make our changes as, as we wish, update the scenarios, make our comparisons. But also, um, what we can do is that we can um, click this tab over here called Overview. Uh, which summarizes in a single chart um, the output for all scenarios run so far. So the first chart uh, shows um, the three scenarios in different colors. Uh, so the red one is the first scenario. And here is the first stage. And you can see that in uh, the, it is the one that performs better. It gives the highest genetic gain in the first stage. And uh, this continues for the next stages actually. Um, cool. um, and then uh, you can see a chart that shows the genetic gain uh, by state uh, scaled by time, uh, which is the, the number of, uh, the, which is just uh, the, the gain per year actually. Um, and this can help you again do some comparisons that here again, the first scenario seems to give the highest uh, gain per year. And finally, we have a third chart uh, that shows uh, the genetic gain uh, by states scaled by cost. So uh, this shows uh, what is, um, which scenario uh, is the most cost uh, effective. And here you can see that the, all of the first scenario produces higher gain and it is uh, more gain per, per year. It, it has also uh, the lowest cost. So compared to the other two scenarios we've run before. So this is pretty much the way you can do some comparisons between uh, those three different uh, scenarios we've done, we, we run. And uh, now um, I will explain a little bit uh, how the, the ranges uh, work. So uh, instead of just setting a single uh, value here in uh, the first um, stage, so instead of having just uh, 1000 entries, you can, uh, you can, um, set a, a range of entries and in this case it's from 100 till 1000 of course you can uh, adjust this uh, as you wish uh, also you can uh, do the same for the number of years in the first stage so it's here you can do tests you can run scenarios from one up to five years and uh, in for one up to five uh, locations or uh, up to 10 maximum here and for um, one up to 10 uh, replicates. So uh, it the, when you press the round button, it will also calculate all those combinations between those different um, intervals in the, in the ranges. And um, this last uh, slider here um, sets uh, how many intervals uh, you will have for each of these ranges. So it's set a minimum of two, which means that only the minimum and the maximum value will be actually uh, used for calculating it. But you can increase that to up to five to, to have even more intervals between those uh, ranges. Um, let's try now with three, we run. Uh, of course, the, the more uh, we increase this, uh, the more uh, combination of scenarios needs to be calculated. So it gets uh, uh, slower. Um, and um, what you get here is, um, except from the, the, the output for this single instance, you get for uh, these ranges. And, and here you can select with this Dropbox um, from a number of uh, plots. And the first one uh, shows the, the number of uh, entries in the first stage uh, compared to gain. So you can see here that uh, how gain increases uh, as you increase the, the um, entries in the first stage. And it, it is, you can see that it's a bit steeper when you increase it from 100 to 550 than when you increase from 550 to 1000, for instance. Similarly with uh, the years, um, it's kind of similar pattern. It increases uh, the genetic gain. Uh, also the locations and the replicates have a lower effect. 
uh, and then you can also compare um, these ranges in a pairwise manner um, in a way that is um, a, a, um, shown as a heat map. So here you have um, for uh, we had three intervals, so we have those three uh, kind of samples here for the number of entries and the three uh, samples for the number of years. And you can see that the more you increase the entries and the more you increase the years, the more the the mean genetic gain gets uh, increased. And you observe the same pattern between entries and locations, entries and repetitions. Actually, here you can see that. It, um, the maximum gain is achieved with uh, lower than eight uh, replicates. So maybe you don't need to exceed that um, if you have 1,000 entries. Um, and similar patterns for the other um, combinations of, um, of input parameters. Um, of course, we have uh, thoughts to 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 improve this, but we really want your uh, your comments and your um, yeah your questions about how we can improve this interface. This is pretty much the features you can uh, you can find so far. Uh, thank you for your attention.